Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from the code called find peak element. It's a medium. We're going to jump right into it. A peak element is an element that is strictly greater than its neighbors. Given a zero index integer array nums, find a peak element and return its index. If the array contains multiple peaks, return the index to any of the peaks. You may imagine that nums of negative one equals nums of n equals negative infinity. In other words, an element is always considered to be strictly greater than a neighbor that is outside the array. You must write an algorithm that runs in O of a log n time. Example one, we have one, two, three, one. And here we return index two, element three, because that is a peak. It is strictly greater than both of its neighbors. And example two, we have the following input nums. Here we have multiple options to return. There are multiple peaks here. We could return index one, this two over here. We could also return index five, element six over here. Both are strictly greater than their neighbors. And we have some constraints over here. Nums of i does not equal nums of i plus one for all valid i. So no number is equivalent to its neighboring number. How are we going to solve this? We want to find a peak in our input array and we want to do this in log of n time. Now this is usually an indication that we want to do some sort of binary search. But if we have no idea where to begin with this sort of problem, like always, we're just going to run through some examples. We're going to start off really basic. So first example, say we just have one element, just the number one. What's the peak here? Well, we know whatever is outside of our array is going to be negative infinity, which means this would be the peak itself. Index zero element one is our peak in this input array. Now say we have two elements, right? One, two or two, one. What is the peak here? Well, over here, two is greater than one and two is also greater than negative infinity, which is after the array ends. So here the peak is two and same over here, right? Two is still the peak. It starts with negative infinity, goes to two, then goes to one. So it's strictly greater than all of its neighbors. In both scenarios, two is our peak. So in any input nums of size two, we'll know what the peak is. It's just going to be that greater number. And we know there has to be a greater number because no two neighboring numbers are going to be equal. So size two is simple enough. What if our input array is size three? So if we had one, zero, one, what is our peak here? Well, here we're going to have two peaks, right? This one over here and this one over here. We just need to find something that's greater than its neighbor and also greater than the other neighbor. Both are on the edges. So either one of those are our peaks. And if there was a number in the middle that was greater than the numbers surrounding it, this is our peak. Now, what if our input array was strictly increasing? What if every single number was greater than the number before it? What's our peak here, right? Zero is less than one, one is less than two, and two is the end of the array. So this last number is our peak. And if the opposite were true, so if we had two, one, zero, then two would still be our peak. It'd be the first element here. So with these examples, we are guaranteed to have at least one peak element in our input nums. This is because we are guaranteed that no two neighboring numbers are equal. And we already checked both cases, right? Strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. There's always going to be a peak. And if that's not true, if the numbers are not strictly increasing or in decreasing order. They cannot be equal based on our constraint. So there has to be a peak in our input. Now, how do we do this in log of n time? Usually log of n means some sort of binary search, right? And what does that mean? That means we're going to split our array in half and see which half to look for a peak in. And there could also be multiple peaks. So say I have an input array of size six. I have three, four, five, six, one, seven. How do I look for a peak here? If I want to do this in binary time, I'm going to go ahead and split my input in half. And now I want to compare numbers. If I check five over here, this is say my midpoint, and I want to compare it to what the next number ahead of me, five is less than six. So let's think about this. What does this mean? Which half will have the peak? Now, worst case, there's only going to be one peak in our array. So if we know that five is less than six, there has to be a peak on this half. Because if the numbers keep increasing, right, we go from six to seven to eight, this is going to be our peak. And if they're not strictly increasing, as soon as that increasing trend is stops, we're going to know our peak. So we go from five to six and then to one. We found a decreasing number, which means six is our peak. And again, if that wasn't true, right, if we kept going from six to seven to eight, after that, we're going to stop because it's going to be negative infinity beyond the array. So all we need to do is find a middle element and compare it with the number after it. If it is greater than the number we started with, then the peak is going to lie in the right half. If that's not true, again, the numbers can't be equal to each other, then it's going to be less than five, say it's three, and we know to look for our peak in this half. So to code this up, we're going to initialize a left and right pointer starting on both ends of our array. So left and right are going to equal zero and length of nums minus one respectively. 
while the two pointers don't converge, so while left is less than right, we want to find our midpoint. So mid is going to equal left plus right integer divided by two. Now we want to compare values of that midpoint and that next number. So if nums of mid is less than nums of mid plus one, we know we want to check in this right half. So we're going to bring our left pointer from the left end into middle plus one. So it's going to be over here. So left equals mid plus one. If that's not true, so else, we're going to move our right pointer into the middle. So right is going to equal middle. So now we just decrease the halves we want to check in. And finally, once left equals right, once we break out of this loop, we can return either left or right. They both point to the same index. Does not matter. So let's go ahead and return this and submit. One time error, name num is not defined. This should be nums. Let's go ahead and submit now. And it is accepted. Now, before leaving, let's just run through a super quick example going through our code line by line to make sure we truly understand exactly what is happening. This is our input nums length of seven. We have one, two, one, three, five, six, four. Going line by line, we start with left being index zero and right being length of nums minus one. So left and right are on both ends. Now, while left is less than right, that is true. We go in this while loop. What is mid? Mid is going to be left plus right divided by two. So zero plus six is six, dividing that by two is three. So our midpoint is three over here. Now we make a check. Nums of mid, so what is that index three? That's also element three. Is this less than nums of mid plus one? This is less than nums of mid plus one. So we're going to move left in to mid plus one. So left is over here and why, right? We know there has to be a peak in this half since three was less than five. So now that we move left over here to mid plus one, we don't go into this else and we're back in this while loop. Left is still less than right. So now we calculate mid again. So what is the index that left and right are on? So that's four and six, four plus six is 10. Dividing that by two, we get five. So mid is at index five over here. Now nums of mid, is this less than nums of mid plus one? That is not true, right? Six is not less than four. So we don't go in this if, and we go into this else instead. So now right is going to equal mid. So right has moved to index five element six over here. We go back in this while loop one last time, left is still less than right. And we calculate our new mid. So four plus five is nine. Integer dividing that by two, we get four because we truncate any decimals. So now our mid is at four. So we check, right? Is five less than six? That is true. So now we're moving left to mid plus one. So now left is going to equal where right is. So now once we go back to line four, left is no longer less than right. They both point at the same index. So we break and we return left, which is index five. And that's correct because at index five, we have a peak. Six is strictly greater than both of its neighbors, both five and four. Now two over here is also a peak. It's greater than both of its neighbors, but we just need to return one peak, one index. So that is what we return. And we're using a binary search to find our solution. So this is log of n for time. And for space, we just have two pointers that we're iterating. So this is going to be constant O of one for space. So we just went ahead and solved find peak element. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.